Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you how to swap out the gauge cluster for a 2011 to 14 Mustang. Uh, it's a pretty simple install, should take you no more than 30 minutes to an hour. Um, and so let's get started. So the first thing you're going to want to do is remove the surrounding trim. I've already done that here because it's kind of a pain to do with just uh, one hand and the other holding the camera. But all you really got to do is lower the steering wheel down to its lowest setting um, and pop the edge off here and then work your way around and the entire piece should come out as one unit. Very simple to do. The next thing you'll notice is that there's a 7mm bolt back there and one more back there. There's only two and like I already said there's 7 millimeters. Uh, to reach the two bolts back there you will need an, an extension um, but once you do get those out the next step is to actually just pull down on the top of it just like that it's gonna pop down and there's gonna be two clips one back there and one back here and all you gotta do is just pull straight back on it so pull down and then pull straight back on all right so here's a close-up of the connector you'll see there's a tab on the top and a tab on the bottom along with this little thing here that moves up and down so to disconnect it you're gonna want to squeeze that piece pull on the upper tab and then move your thumb to the lower tab and it'll pull uh, right out. If you only push the bottom tab and pull, it's a bit more difficult. So make sure you push it, then switch this one and pull the entire thing out. Alright, so once you have your gauge cluster out, uh, go ahead and lay it down on something soft like a towel or something. Uh, you're going to look at the back here and you're going to find nine T15 uh, torque screws. So I've already taken most of them out. Um, but there's so one here, here 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 all the way around so make sure you just get all of them out um, and once you do get all those out uh, the entire gauge cluster is going to come apart uh, kind of like in layers let me show you that in a second here uh, but it'll right after this is when you have access to the gauge face so you pull the last bolt out this back cover is going to come off like that be careful of all the electronics and then now at this point um, you're gonna you're gonna want to use two hands for this but uh you know make sure you're grabbing the entire unit and turn it around so it's facing up again and the entire unit should come off or the entire top cover I mean should come right off just like that and then you can remove this piece here be careful of the needles. Get this thing. There we go. So you'll notice that uh, it's a little edge right here and another one here. So you can actually just bend those back. That's what I did for the first time I installed these. They're kind of a pain and it doesn't really affect anything to bend them back a bit. Alright, so to take off the needle, um, the first thing you're going to want to notice is that uh, all these needles here, and this is probably only applicable to uh, you know, this gauge cluster or like um, any other system that's similar to the 11 to 14 Mustang uh, gauge cluster, uh, when you rotate it, it'll rotate freely one way and it'll stop uh, at a certain point. So you can see like this will rotate freely for until it hits the other needle and then it hits a certain point here. This is called a positive stop. And if you ever tuned your car and just watch the speedo, you'll know it uh, It does this thing where it freaks out um, and it's slamming to the positive stop. So that gives you an idea of where it is. So you're going to want to turn all your needles to the positive stop and just make a get a, gen, a general idea of where they are. Okay. And uh, from there, uh, once uh, what I did is I took pictures of it so I could reference back at it. Um, and that's probably the best way to do it instead of marking on your... Uh, and your gauge face, which is what they suggest to do. Um, but anyway, so pull one of these needles off. All you have to do is hit one of the positive stops. So in this case, just like this. And very slowly and gently keep twisting it, opposing the direction of the positive stop. Keep going. Just this slight upward force. Be very gentle with it. This needle will actually clear this one. I've done this before, just like that. Just pull up slowly, and it'll come right off. Be very careful. You'll see it's pretty fragile. There's a little bit right there. 
and down there. If this thing will focus, oh, just like that. Okay, so that's how you pull it off. Okay, you can do the same thing for all the needles. Uh, it's a lot. It's it's. I know it's intimidating, but it's really not too bad. Um, I did it for the first time last night, and it was really no biggie at all. The fork thing or doing it with knives is a lot more sketch. This is probably the best way to do it. Just hit the positive stop. Once you hit the positive stop, just keep rotating past it and slowly slide off of it. Okay, it's not glued on or anything. All right. Um, so once you pull all of these off, um, you can just, this is literally just a sheet that comes on and off. I've got my old one. Let's see here. It's just like this. It's a plastic sheet. Nothing else. Um, this is also a good time. For example, uh, my ABS module is kind of retarded. So my ABS light, my traction control light, and the car going out of control light all uh, come on whenever I start the car. Um, and you can actually use uh, painter's tape on the other side, on this side. Don't use any other tape other than the painter's tape. Uh, use painter's tape to um, uh, make those lights uh, black out. Um, so that's what I did. If you have an airbag light because you have aftermarket seats, uh, that's a really easy method. I find that you need about three layers to uh, get it to not, uh, for the light to not be able to come through. Um, and don't use anything else, anything other than painter's tape because uh, you will probably end up, uh, end up damaging the backing of your new gauge face. All right, so once you got your new sheet on and you put your new needles on, it doesn't matter where the needles sit. Okay, so let's do this one. Uh, it's kind of hard to do holding the camera at the same time. Just slide it on uh, anywhere and just gently, very gently push it on and it'll click on. Okay, and you'll notice for me, uh, because I had to twist it, the positive stop was here originally, if you guys remember. And I had to twist it all the way to here to get the needle to come off. And now my positive stop is here. So all you really got to do is just turn it. Don't pull up on it like you did before, obviously. Just turn it until it sits where the positive stop uh, normally was or where you no noted in the picture. So in this case, I'm going to actually go past empty since the car likes to say full is all the way here. So I've moved this a little bit further back. Now it will say full is around here. So... Um, same with all the other needles. Don't put it exactly at the zero. I noticed that uh, this cluster likes to um, start down here and then move up here when you start the car and then settle at zero. Alright, so once you've reassembled your gauge cluster, you're going to want to test to see if all the uh, values um, go back to where uh, you noted them to be before. Um, so all you got to do is put your key to the on position and your uh, fuel and coolant temps should go up to what they were before. The coolant might be a little lower than before, obviously, depending on how long it took. But um, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, you just gotta put all the pieces, uh, all, all the needles back onto the same point. If it's not perfectly lined up, so let's say if the tack was a little bit below zero, you have to unplug it, take it all the way back apart, and adjust the positive stop. Uh, just a bit. So if it was a bit, if it was, let's say if it was at 500 RPM right now, I'd have to move the positive stop down uh, counterclockwise just a couple degrees to compensate for that. Alright. Uh, to put the whole thing back together, it's just basically the same thing in reverse. Um, all you gotta do is shove this back in. It's kind of a pain to do with one hand, but uh, fiddle with it a bit. that and make sure the two bottom clips go back into place one and the other one try not to touch the actual face or the actual plastic and then once you're there the two bolts go back in be careful not to drop them down there and the trim goes back on just by clicking to place from your your, your steering wheels all the way and uh, that's pretty much the end of it that's all there is to it. If you have any questions, just leave a comment or just email me. Alright.